Good evening. I'd like to take call, call the Thursday, December 20th uh, select board, uh, regularly scheduled select board meeting to order. To my left is Pete Kelly. I'm Brad Town, and to my right is uh, Jeremy Hansen. With us also is uh, Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda data? I have, I have no additions or changes. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. <laughs> the, 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 the yeah. You didn't get the, the paperwork that I sent, so okay. I'm trying to put some of it up. Well, he's, but I do have he's got a, he's got a, he's got um, a, pr a printed in one. Oh, okay. A, a, including yeah. the audience. Uh, including the audience. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Did you get uh, the peak at one? Thing with today? Um, this is what not today. Was, I mean, um, for oh, oh, yeah. just yeah. 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 I'm not sure what's in it. Yeah, he's got it right yeah, here. No, okay, good. Boy, that looks bigger when it's not on a computer, huh? It is. It's on there, but we didn't. Uh, Pete Kelly and I didn't get any any uh, notice of this meeting. Yeah, both both Yahoo addresses. Check it. maybe Yahoo. I checked Yahoo and AOL. Okay, so hmm. I don't know what the story. Is. I, I, we got it December fifth, and most prior to that. Most notices hmm. prior to that. Hmm. Um. Uh, Treasurer, uh, so you're pretty much done with the trail pirate and that, right? Um, That's we're going to, well, it's here, uh, or the ordinance is on the uh, agenda at 715, so we oh, should be able to, okay. we'll make it. I'm sorry, no, I just mm -hmm. didn't know. Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. I have given, I, now, now you all have the reports, but I have given the November budget status report, trial balance, and delinquent tax forms to the select board. Uh, and remember, there was a VMERS audit that we had, and it was for 2016 and 17, and once we got the results, we wanted to see them. I got the results this week. And on it, it says, and I'll pass this on so you can see it. It says uh, from July 1st of 2016 to June 30th of 2017 is complete and accurate based on plan provisions. So whatever I gave them was completely accurate. And they sent that forward to the state. So you just can look at that. Right. But that is, you know, the results of that. Okay. And otherwise than that, everything else I have is in the agenda. Very good. Um, you've gone through the board. Go through this piece to look at the notes. Yeah, and I'm I'll look at okay. the two. Uh, forgiveness of balances, five dollars or less, Diane. Yes, I have just a few of them. I think they total like three dollars, but I have I think five of them in all, and that's the quarter. And I would like to be able to write them off if I could. You want to write off three dollars in all? Oh, yeah, great! There's, Diane. there's a bunch of them. Don't worry, I'll here goes the profits. Yeah, Let me take care of it. <laughs> Need a uh, motion on that one. Yeah. Uh, I move that we allow them to uh, deduct it uh, right off the $3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And ordinance, use of town roads for snowmobiles and ATVs data. Right, and I realize you didn't get this, so you haven't had a chance to look at it. This is the model snowmobile ordinance that the league puts out, um, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, and the questions that I had, we just touched on briefly, was, um, well, I guess one of the issues that they have a section of, for time of operation. Are you interested in a time frame, a specified time frame? You mean during the winter? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, it's hard to run a snowmobile in July. Time of day. Oh, oh. <laughs> time of day. It is, an AT, it is an ATV. No, this is just no. snowmobiles. Just snowmobiles. snowmobiles. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, let's say, um, what hours would you want it to operate or what hours would you not want it to operate? In other words, you want to put a caveat on the hours is what my question was. So that way you don't have snowmobiles going through a three. Yeah. It's like six to eight. Six. Kind of early in the morning. I was thinking more like 7 to 9, 7 to 10. I mean, I mean, I mean that seems reasonable either way. Mm -hmm. 7 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Is that what sure. you're thinking? Okay. No, so ask, let's ask our snowmobiler enthusiast here. 
I don't think after 10, 11 o'clock you're going to see many people coming through, but you might have some people that kind of uh, wandered off the beaten path, and by the time they get here, they're mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes past that, and so, you know, so, to go so another 40 miles around, mm -hmm. you're going to... So it's going to require them to plan? <laughs> Well, even even so, I mean, like the ferry. we usually only put a curfew trail on if there if there is a problem. Mm -hmm. um, usually, we try to see how the trail works, and then we can curfew it down from there. Um, My only thing is, I don't want to let people get used to the idea they can run through at twelve o'clock at night, then exactly. take them, then try and take them, turn that. them back. Yeah, it'd be better to start. And there and there are houses right, right. there. Yep. Yeah. And I guess the other thing with that, to remember, this is, if I understand correctly, <coughs> renewable every year. Right. And we can change it at the renewal. We can change it in the middle of the year. We can yeah. put yeah. signs right up saying, boom, but, you know, this has been an issue and we're going to correct it. And mm. Well, let's try 7 to 10. Okay. I think that'll, what time does Applebee's close? Nine? I think it's 9. 9 o'clock, maybe. So. Yeah. Well, they'll, Except for the weekends. I think it might be till 11. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if we've seen the, if, if there's no complaints, but we right. seem to have a lot of machines going through a little bit later, we can always do a weekend right. hour. Yeah. So. Yeah, start with that. I mean, you know, I think there's a lot to learn. Yes, sir. Right. Right. The other section that I had a question on, and we talked, just touched on it a minute ago, was are you going to um, work with penalties? Um, and I thought it was well, more trouble than it was worth. I think we'll yeah. let the snowmobile people police the themselves. Police. And, and I mean, we'll it's such a small section as well, so I mean, yeah. you know, it's okay. Obviously, so. with the exception of the ones that are already set by the state of Vermont. The Obviously, we have to go with the state yeah. law. Yeah. On on the current vast, like on the um, trail maps, it lists all the fines and the amounts and what they are, and um, all the uh, sheriff and the state police are all up on that. Mm -hmm. It pretty much covers everything. Is that on, on your website? It should be. Yes. Either ours or the vast website. So what I will do from this sample, which again you don't have, but I will remove anything that talks about um, the enforcement of this ordinance since we're not putting any penalties. Also, um, I was going to get the wording from Rob um, Halpert on the renewal every year. How, do you, how does that happen? Do, do you have to have a whole public hearing on the ordinance and so forth. So I'll finish that up and I'll send that to you somehow. Can you get away with just one public hearing on that? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'd almost be tempted to... Uh, um, it does I mean, take 60 days for an ordinance after you adopt it for it to be effective. So, so too much. That is a state law. Yeah. So... Snowmobile season, start, or the Bass opens their trails the 15th of December, am I right? 15th or 16th, yeah. yes. It's always after the muzzle loading season. I'm just trying to work backwards. I'm not good at that. October. So you'd have to have the hearing in October. Yeah, right. Two months, you said 60 days. Yeah, well, yeah, you'd have to, you know, have a hearing, and then you'd have to vote whether you were going to renew it, and then it would be... Um, so back and the, that's what I was asking Rob. Does is this a whole new ordinance? Do we have to do the sixty days yearly? Yeah. I'm and wondering we, whether we do. And you haven't heard that? Uh, not yet. No, because so I only the, thought to ask truth, today. Truth, we had be starting back in September. So I mean, it doesn't hurt to do it earlier, right? You know, yeah. I mean, we could do it in August. I mean, it's yeah. yeah. So we don't hold them up. I up. think it would be better off that we don't affect. You know, if the trail opens on December 15th, it's all decided. I mean, we knew this year was going to be, right. yeah. we weren't making it, but. We go to the Barrytown Select Board every year and with our current map and any changes in whatever mm -hmm. we have and, you know, ask their permission and, and speak up and any questions and, you know. When do you usually through. do that? Uh, what month? It's usually two months in advance, Before. at least, yeah. yeah. We, we like September's to get everything done ahead September. of time, so there's no curveballs. Yeah. Yeah. September wouldn't hurt anything. Well, the thing with this is they've got to go around to three or four different, or five or six different towns to get these ordinances done if they're yearly. 
so, so earlier. Maybe we should take and look to August. Okay. Okay. I don't think it to be renewed in August. I don't think, but I think what I wanted problem. to know was the legality of Not having is it a whole new ordinance right. every year, is what I'm trying to say. And I don't think it is. Anything else on the ordinance? Uh, no, I'll, I'll have that for you um, shortly, and we'll talk about it. It'll be on the agenda next time. Okay, uh, review of draft audit, Diane? Okay, so you do have the audit, right? So I can go over a little bit of it. Did you? you it's right, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep, thank, thank you. you. So I'm not going to, I think the one that is the most similar to us, the, what we're looking at all the time, is Exhibit G. And that looks like our um, budget status report. What page is that, Diane? Uh, that is page 16. So I just want to briefly go over some of the, uh, some of the highlights of it. And th my numbers don't match up perfectly the way the auditors do it. Even the, the bottom yeah. line is the same. But there's like three or four different things that they show differently than I do. Yeah. Yeah. They categorize things a little yeah, different. So than page than we 16. Did. 16. What am I on? It's right at the bottom, Pete, the number. When yeah. you, once you get in there. Oh, the next page. <laughs> yeah. I was looking at these little numbers. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, anyways, <laughs> we, we did better on the pilot. I'm looking at the revenues right now. And so we had underestimated what we would receive for pilot. So that's, you know, very good. Uh, let's see, the state of Vermont use, that one was really, you know, we did better on that one as well. Okay, we went way over on the zoning as far as revenue, so we did better. So a lot of our revenues were better. Um, a lot of them were not, you know, they, they were not significant changes. I just want to go over the things that were And that's what we talk about. We know we're underestimating our right. revenues. Right. Yeah. So on that one. But I think now we are getting a little bit better. We're getting closer. Yeah. But the, the total underestimate was only $10,000. Well, one of the reasons for that is the contract at the hospital that mm -hmm. we had planned oh. on. I mean, we didn't have the expense either. <laughs> right. But, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, on page 17 at the end, the health insurance buyback, that had doubled because uh, Tom had become full-time for working for us. And Tom Badowski yeah. was full-time. And he elected to get um, the buyback as opposed to going on to our insurance. And, of course, we had no way of estimating that two years ago because we had no idea it was going to happen. And that's the situation we get into because we, we take our yeah. current people. Yeah, because that's all we've got and to then go by. It changes. Yeah. It changes. But we haven't gotten, it's not yeah. a terrible problem. And then on page 18, uh, for the Development Review Board, the secretary was over. And the secretary is the one, she does the minutes, but she also does a lot of research. So when she's there, you know, t taking minutes, it's not just the time that she puts into taking the minutes, it's also the time that she researches the laws and stuff. So that one went way over. We have a different secretary this year and does not appear that she's putting in as much time right now. And I, they haven't had as many meetings this year either so far. Uh, let's see. And then if you look at the planning, okay, um, for the, what we call other, um, that's underneath the advertising and printing, that 4727 was the consultant. Now, a lot of that money is coming out of reserves, but I show it differently. Okay. Right. So really, so the 4700, actually we only used 1,000 of it that we had for the budget. The rest of it came out of our reserves. So Good. I've used that. Anything we take out of the reserves, it hits the expense, yes. it hits our yes. budget. Yes, the full amount. Yeah. That, that's just the way it is. Okay. Um, and then on page 19, uh, the board of, one is under, let's see, general, and under tax refunds and abatements, that's 33000 I never know from year to year what that's going to be. We never ever put in, you know, a high enough number because you just have no way of knowing. Okay. So that's why that one is so much higher. Would it be worthwhile for us to grossly overestimate it, knowing that that's going to happen? I mean, it sort of comes out in the, in the balance, it, but... It does, yeah. And, well, we, and we could do that. Well, the other thing that we could do is, if you were to look on the balance sheet, is we actually have an amount that we hold for bad debts, and we could actually start using that. 
if well, we, we had chose some to. special situations, didn't we? In that we yeah. had that well, we solar error, and then we yeah. also had. Is that also include anything with Green Mountain Power? Mm -hmm. They hadn't paid, so we were. Yeah, okay. that's errors and emissions. Yeah. Okay. And the solar thing was also errors and emissions. I'm the just, board I'm of just, abatement is truly abating taxes. Right. Okay. And we never know who's going to apply mm -hmm. to have a right. Correct. abatement. But, but you're saying there's a fund separate from the, the general fund that would have there, it, it, Well, it's in the general fund, but it's in the balance sheet portion of it, and it's called um, balance, uh, allowance, uh, allowance for bad yeah. debts. Okay. And I've never touched that, and I, I technically could mm -hmm. if I wanted to for some of these abatements, especially mm -hmm. the older ones, because that's what that's there for. Okay, that, that makes sense if that line item is there for that. Then. Yes, okay. that we can consider that in the future. Okay. Let's see. And then as far as the police, we were down an officer in FY18, I believe. So that's why um, they were coming under the expenses. And also the expenses were under because we did not have to contract for the full year for the hospital. Um, and then summer rose for the highway. This is on page 20. Summer rose for the highway. We tend to get, see, when, when I am estimating the wages for winter and summer, I am taking six months winter and six months summer. And a lot of times, uh, Tim, the road foreman, will tell me, I want you to continue the summer pay, payroll for a couple, cu couple more weeks. So we end up having more in summer payroll than we do in winter payroll. So that's why sometimes the summer payroll is over and the winter is under. And it's just because of the way he decides. Yeah. As long because as it comes of the out the wash. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. But that's why that is different. So instead of 13 weeks in each, it might be 14 or 15 in one yeah. and, and yeah, 11 right, in yeah. another. Right. Maybe something like that. And the winter rose, we were slightly down on that. We did not spend all of the money that we said we, we had planned on. Uh, and then the next page, page 21, under general uh, resurfacing and gravel, part of the 147000 is money that was capitalized that's in the assets. Uh, but I have to show it as an expense, and then I show it as an asset as well. So that's the way that works. Um, otherwise, that under other for highway, we were under in expenses. So that was a good thing. So overall, if you look on page 22, at the, at the middle column at the bottom, it says uh, where it says net change in fund balance, we had a loss of $29,548. And, and that, that was definitely due to the Green Mountain yes, Power Yes, that was, because the revenues yeah. were not yeah. as high as they should have been for the property taxes. So that brought um, the total fund balance, which has reserves in it, et cetera, of down to a million seventy-three thousand. So it is down for the year. But this is the first time in, like, I think four years that we've actually, it's been, you know, So we're been really passed. running half of that fund balance is restricted and committed. And the other half is unrestricted. Un yeah. Un yeah. And that was the highlights for that. Um, and then, if you were to, well, I don't know, it's so easy to find here, but I was looking to see, you know, there's significant audit findings, and that is going to be towards the end. There's like one of three pages. And if you look on page two of three, it says, um, the difficulties encountered in performing the audit, we encountered no significant div difficulties in dealing with management and performing completing our audit. So there did not appear to be any audit findings that were of grave nature. I had nine uh, entries that they gave me for all the different fund balances that I made for the entire year. And there was a lot of them I had posted something in just the wrong categories. Well, Diane, I would like to say that was excellent. That really is a very good job, and I wanted to thank you for doing that because I know it's nice not to have any findings and to have things right. as they should be, you know, as they yeah. should be. Yeah. And to reliably have it that way, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Right. No, thank you. Of course, Linda will be here at our next meeting, and she'll and, talk about it again. Yeah, they will. They'll be wanting you to accept this audit, and maybe now they have a chance to read it. Um, yeah. And Linda Mullins from the accountants will be here on the third of January to, to just go go over with you. So, if you had any questions, um, 
that you could think of. She asked me if she could know ahead of time and she could make sure she knew the answer. If you think of anything, let me know and I'll ask her. Or if you um, want me to clarify anything, you can certainly clarify yeah. it or, or help. We didn't think we'd go line for line. Yeah. Um, no, it's not <laughs> but There was nothing. We have the same figures, only they're in different holes. Some, you know, yeah. some of them. Yeah. Opening of the town bid, uh, report bids? Yes. We have five. You might have to open one. Wow, yeah. Cheat cheat for your viewing pleasure. Diane, would you like one? Um, We do, we do ask in our um, bid request for a sample, only many of these don't because we've done business with them before. Which is why Brad has a bigger package. Stillwater Graphics? I have that one. Okay. Stillwater Graphics is out of Williamstown. Uh, let's see. They're saying, I don't know exactly how much information you want on this, but their bid for 600 is $3,185. It says page count 225 plus cover. So I don't know how many pages you were looking for. But... That's accurate, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, so that's 225 pages plus cover? Right. Yes. I think that was in the RFP, right? Yes, yeah. <coughs> the L. Brown Sons? So L. Brown's son, same thing, cover 224 pages of text. It covers an 80-pound gloss cover. The text is 20-pound white opaque. For 600 copies, it's $2,418, which is $4.03 each. What was the uh, cost of the cover? 2418 for 600 I think they're all for 600 Yeah. 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 I have jet service. Um, all the same information, $2,427. I have repo. Um, they have given a price for, they've added 2018 reports only. It would be 2300 Fifty dollars. They also gave us a price if we bought two years in a row, but our RFP did not call for that. So two thousand three hundred fifty dollars. What was jet service again? Twenty-four twenty-seven. 
And I have RC Brayshaw. Um, some samples of their work down in Hinsdale. Hinsdale, New Hampshire. Yep. And Piermont and Stratford, New Hampshire. And their bid is two thousand nine hundred and six. For the for the the repro bid, was that including shipping? The repro bid, let me just be sure that shipping via UPS or the local curry will bring it to the town office. And Brayshaw is a delivery by RCB, so they will deliver. Um, I'm not seeing if that's addressed from Al Brown. It's not in Stillwater Graphics either. We have had L. Brown before, and they did bring it. They did. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just on um, Silver and Barry. Yeah, I and imagine Jack would bring so it. So I would think the shipping would be mm -hmm. included in steel water as well. In steel water yeah. as well. It just says shipped to Berlin. Right. Right. I mean, it's nice having a local one that if we had to go there. Well, you know. We don't have to go to Massachusetts um, or something. I know we're not supposed to exercise favoritism or anything like that, and I'm not. But Jet is in Berlin. For nine dollars. For nine dollars. Mm -hmm. Mostly the same. For seventy-seven dollars. Look, twenty-four eighteen and twenty. Repo is twenty-three fifty. Twenty-three fifty. What he's saying. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they're three ninety-two a copy for for, for repro. Okay. Jet service is 404 a copy, and Al Brown and Sons is 403 a copy. Right. For copy. So, I don't want to, I mean, this cheapest always cheapest. Is that what we're Well, the board to has the for? option to accept the bid that they feel is in the best interest of the community. And we that have, may or may not be the lowest right. bid. We, we have used Jet before. I mean, their work's been. Last year, they were our vendor from last year. They had I'm also given us a price at one time, but we didn't. Again, it wasn't in the, in the bid spec, right. so we had to. Right. I'm so, just throwing that out there. I thought we also had a bit of a sassy response one year when we did not choose them. Right. Well, and I get it, but I, I think I couldn't help but agree that it was, you know, it's a local person. They do competent work. It's satisfactory to us. And what, what was it? Twelve bucks or fifteen bucks or something like yeah, that. I yeah. We're supposed to listen to our constituents, <laughs> but w whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. And you're right; it is more money. It isn't four twenty-seven. It's three fifty. So. Well, the spread between is what seventy-seven dollars. Yeah. Move that we accept the bid from Repro in the amount of twenty-three fifty. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Repro has it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Four. Uh, 
A resignation from the Planning Commission, Dan? We had a resignation from uh, Mr. Farrell. Jeff Farrell resigned from the Planning Commission. Um, he did send us an email. He was unable to continue his duties as a member of the Planning Commission due to returning to active duty for the Vermont Army National Guard and the duties required for that position. Please accept my resignation and make my posi position available for a new member. Thank you for having me on the team. Jeffrey Farrell, Crosstown Road, Berlin. Well, you accept with sadness. Move to accept Jeff Farrell's resignation from the Planning Commission. Second. Any further discussion? I suppose we should post that then. Um, we, we, we will post the opening, and if, would you like me to draw a thank you letter? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, approval license permit vouchers. Um, a quick question. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I've actually I've asked this question before, but I'm going to ask it again. Um, we have two. Um, phone lines from Comcast that we're paying for, mm -hmm. um, even though we get our phone service that I think we actually have machines. three. The fax machines yeah, are on are, analog. Are Comcast. Do they have to be? I believe they yeah. do. Yeah. Phone's a phone. Well, the others come through the internet. And right. I've told you everything I know, but um, yeah. I can check on that if you'd like. Yeah, I mean, because we're, we're paying for phone lines. I don't know if it would be more expensive or less expensive just to do the voice over IP. Mm -hmm. But again, in the interest of sort of consolidating these, we're paying $40 a month for mm -hmm. those, which I suspect you probably don't use $40 worth of faxes. I don't. I'm not speaking for the clerk's office. Of course. Um, but, yeah. um, but I'll be glad to check that. That's a, that's a mm -hmm. good point. Um, I had been told at one time that the voice over internet wouldn't work with that. Same here, but I could. However, remember. I will. Our, all, all, of our, all of our multifunction printers like that at Norwich are all plugged into the network. Okay, well, and just, I'm, and do everything over I'm not a network person, yeah. but so I need to. I of course, we have things. standalone fax machines. Does that make any difference? Shouldn't. I mean, okay. you can have it too, where it's just a, just like a phone plug mm -hmm. that just goes in. I'd be glad to check. Okay, yeah. Okay. Find out if there's another fee for adding, adding those to the voice over IP system. Okay. I'd say the, the the main drawback would be that if the internet goes down, then you lose that too. I mean, ar arguably yeah. you could use that for a phone backup. I think we have two fax machines on that, and I believe the highway garage is. Well, the phone number is two two nine ninety five thirty. Okay, that's, that's the, the one fax, here. Yeah, and two two three forty four zero two. That's police. Police. Oh, is there just two? Those yeah, two, so the I think two lines that they have listed here. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. then I'm ignore me. I mean, that, on on this bill, anyways. Yeah. Well, it would be yeah. No, I think they have internet at the highway. They do, yes, but yeah. that's Static. a different bill. Yeah. yeah. So I move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G12 with checks 18712 through 18752 in the amount of $83,655.17. Also payroll warrant number 19-12 for payroll from November 25th, 2018 through December 8th, 2018 in the amount of $47,684.39. Also the October, November reconciled bank statements for the general fund, super commission, and the water division and the November Journal Art of, I'm sorry, the November General Journal and Tax Admin entries. Your second. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. And uh, administrator's report later. Yes, I have just a few things. Um, I think it was last Wednesday, Rosemary Coran, Diane, and myself attended a class at the hospital for uh, emergency management, and I think we got a better idea of what our roles would be in an emergency. Um, 
Bruce Richardson and Wanda Burrell on our emergency management team were there, as well as um, several people from other communities. And, and I thought the lady at the state did a very did nice job, job explaining it. So we did, we did do that. Um, I know that most of you get this in the mail, maybe. If you don't, I have an extra copy. If you would like to read the latest leagues, um, magazine. We have also released today the request for proposal for audit services. Um, this was the last year of our audit contract. Um, we have mailed it to three firms, the three local firms that are able to handle our audit, and they are the company that we now use, Fothergill and Sagali, um, Powers and Sullivan, and um, Pro Wisner, Mudget, Mudget, yeah, and we've used them before too. Um, tonight, over at the school, they're having a public hearing on the land use regulations that are going to be in the ballot in March. Uh, the board also needs to hold a public hearing, and that is going to be has been scheduled for January 10th, which is not your regular meeting night. It would be uh, the second Thursday in January. What um, at regular at seven, seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. That's all I have. Would, would that be here? Or was yeah, that that's going to be here. Yeah. yeah. Are we going to be? Are we going to be talking about the budget or not? Anything for executive Sorry. session? Are we going to talk about the budget? No. Um, nothing for executive session. Did you want me to put the budget on the next meeting so that we can I think so. review that? Okay. So we'll do okay, that, yeah. Diane. Yeah. For, would that, that be a final review then? We've got, it? Um, we need, um, I don't know if you heard me say, we have to get it to Rosemary by the 17th of January. So I think we have time um, if you need more than one meeting. But I don't see a lot of things in there that yeah, are going to be adjusted. Would you send me that great spreadsheet that you have? Yes. That'd be, that'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So on that one. Round table, please. Um, all set. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done.